Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Console Corner Power Rankings. Man, what a weekend it's been. Uh, you know, we just completed our third week of PCL qualifiers. Uh, week one and week two were open bracket, and you scored a certain amount of points depending on where you placed in the bracket at the end of the tournament. And then those top eight teams in the point standings move on to week three, are split into two groups of four teams each, and then they play each other in a round-robin format which was three sets for each team, and the top two teams from each group make the league. So in the past, we've done the power rankings where the top eight teams for each region on each console were determined. So we did the top eight teams for PS4 NA, PS4 EU, Xbox NA, and Xbox EU. So there were you know, eight teams split across four different regions or four different consoles or two consoles and two regions, but there was four power rankings. Then we decided to merge the power rankings with the PS4 NA and the PS4 EU together and only have eight teams uh, power ranked amongst the two regions on the same console and the same with Xbox NA and Xbox EU. But now, we have a PCL, which is the Paladins Console League. We have the 16 teams that will be f duking it out f over the next six weeks of play. Uh, so we will be combining all 16 teams into one power ranking, which I think will just be awesome and, and create so much more havoc uh, for the spectators, for the teams, <clears throat> just for everyone in general, you know, Everyone's going to be fighting for that number one team in the power rankings now. I think it's going to make it a lot more competitive as well. Um, you know, all 16 teams in one power ranking just across NA, EU, Xbox, and PS4. It just is awesome. Uh, so let's get into week zero's power rankings. Now, the reason why it's week zero is because they just finished group play. We know who's going into the league, but they haven't played any league play yet. So this is week zero. And after week one of the league, we'll do power rankings week one. But for now, week zero starts off with the number one team, which is Elevate from PS4 North America. They lost zero times in group play this weekend. Uh, they didn't take a single map lost, and they 2-0'd all of their opponents. Um, now, one of them was a forfeit match given uh, by Despacito 2, not showing up, but the other two teams, the Nan Handlers and Warm Up, were also given that as well. So they were able to 2 the Nan Handlers and 2-0 Warm Up, Two tough teams in itself. So Elevate is your number one team right now. At number two is Flashpoint from PS4 EU. They lost one map all weekend, and that was to Cyclone, which, if you are unaware, Cyclone GG is the previous FY Midnight Oligarchs. They signed a Cyclone. Congratulations on that org for picking up such a great team. Um, so Flashpoint is your number two team, only losing one map to Cyclone. Your number three team is Vexed Gaming from Xbox EU. They also only lost one map, and that was to need healing. Now, the reason why Flashpoint is above Vexed in this position for both of them only losing one map uh, across three sets is because I feel Cyclone is a better team than need healing. So that therefore, Flashpoint had the tougher matchup. So Flashpoint at number two, Vex Gaming at number three. At number four is Curse These Hands. Now, they have won the bronze match in the first two weeks of open qualifiers, and now they are here. They were the number four seed coming in, and they're in Group B along with Vampire Lord and Press Y and Cute. Cute is another team that didn't show up to play, so they were DQ'd, and that was an automatic victory for all three of the remaining teams in that group. But Kirsty's Hands was able to beat Press Y. They were able to beat Vampire Lord, and I feel that Kirsty's Hands has just become a powerhouse of a team they have a great lineup and they've been moving up in not only the power rankings but the standings in the xbox na region as well at number five is cyclone again they faced flashpoint and they took one map off of them they have been doing this on a consistent basis they have been 2 owing everyone else they've gone up against as well so i feel that they are right behind flashpoint uh, so they're at number five. At number six is Onslaught. Now, Onslaught has dropped all the way to number six. They did win uh, all of their matches this weekend in group play. They went 3-0. and But, however, they lost one map to Happy Battlecats. Happy Battlecats 
coming into this was not a strong team. Coming into this, they were not the team that I would think would make it into the league. Uh, myself and a few others also thought that the Xbox team, uh, which changed their name to Bushwakan Esports, would be the team coming out with Onslaught into the league out of Group A of Xbox NA. Um, you know, Happy Battle Cats, New Gaming Order. Uh, new Gaming Order, not so concerned about them, but I, I did say on the show uh, before the weekend group play started that between Happy Battle Cats and Bushwakan Esports, they both play each other in round one. Whoever wins that could potentially be the team to come out on top uh, for that second place behind Onslaught. So Onslaught's at number six this week. They did beat Happy Battle Cats two to one, but again, losing a map to a team that was not even expected to come out of the group stages into the league uh, is a big blow to them. At number seven is OTP. I feel like this team is really strong. They had three teams in their bracket that are, uh, you know, most notably good and very well uh, placed teams in the past. They have some similarities to OTP as well, and I feel like they are just there with them, with OTP. Now, I feel that OTP is right behind Vexed, but I feel that the teams that were in their group, which were Bulldog Esports, Venom, and Zimmerframe, uh, are right up there with OTP. Uh, the, you know, OTP has that tank duo I've talked so much about, and I just feel like they're a really good team right now. They're in a good spot, and they're, they're working their way towards getting on the same level as Vexed Gaming. At number eight this week is Warm Up. Now, Warm Up did not have that great of a group play. Uh, you know, they were, in, they were in PS4 NA's Group A, so they were grouped with Elevate. That would be their biggest challenge there. They did get 2 0 by them, uh, but they 2 0 the Nan Handlers. And if they would beat the Nan Handlers, then I had them moving into the league. I had them advancing. Um, they didn't have to worry about Despacito 2 at the same time because they didn't show up. Uh, they maybe could have been worried about them if they had shown up, but I think beating Nan Handlers was good enough to make it into the league for them. Uh, so, and, and another thing is, is warm up is doing really good. They they have a young lineup. They have a veteran in Garcia helping that young lineup. Uh, they did acquire Sorrow uh, and move Cirques uh, from main roster to sub. Uh, there's some scheduling issues with that. So I hope that Sorrow can help them, uh, because he's a big veteran as well. He's been to two lands, uh, once at Valencia, once at the Summer Land for the PS4 NA teams that he was on. Uh, so he, he will be playing the front line. That's a big veteran move there. You, you move Garcia from that front line to the support role, so now you have a veteran player on your support role. Your damages and your flex are still young talent, but you can develop them uh, through the eyes and, and, and mind minds of those two veteran players at those two crucial positions as well. So they're just chilling right now. They got 0-2'd by Elevate, uh, but they 2 0 Nan Handlers, and they got the 2-0 forfeit from Despacito too. At number nine is the third leg. This is the team that took me by surprise this weekend. Uh, they weren't in a very difficult group, and it was, was a little confusing to those who don't know how the system works. You gain points through the round robin tournament uh, based on the sets. So, you know, the set score. So if you win two to one, you get two points. Um, so, and, and if you give up one, then you give one of your points away. So if you win two one, you're only coming away with one point there. They were in a group with Oni Channers, Thomas and Friends, and Paladins and Misfits. Now Paladins Misfits is an underdog in this uh, group here the third leg was kind of but they have the more veteran lineup or veteran roster uh, paladins misfits bunch of new players to the game uh, you know they've been grinding together so big props to them they made it to group play that is a big deal especially when there's about 16 teams in open bracket only 50 percent of them are going to move to group play so big ups to paladins misfits from qualifying for the group play um, i don't want them to look down on themselves uh, going 0-3 in group play because they played great. They made it to group play. That's something a lot of teams and a lot of players can't say they did. Um, but I had Thomas and Friends coming out of this group with Oni Channers. Now, the third leg beat Paladins Misfits 2-0. And they beat Oni Channers 2-1, I believe. And they lost to Thomas and Friends. Now, Thomas and Friends beat 
Palace Misfits, and they lost to Oni Channers. So if they would have won against the third leg 2-0 in the set, they could have been advancing. But unfortunately, they were taken to three games by the third leg. Third leg lost 1-2, to two, but they still advanced because of the points. So big ups to the third leg. Uh, they took Thomas and Friends to three maps again. They 2-0'd, actually, Oni Channers. Um, I believe, or it was a 2-1. I'm sorry, it was a 2-1. So the third leg, biggest upset for me this weekend across both consoles, all regions. So that's a big move for them. Uh, they're at number nine. At number 10 is My Dad Cuts My Hair. Uh, you know, they got O2'd by Vex again. They have taken a map off of them before in the week one. Um, so it's kind of surprising to see them struggle. You know, they were in the bronze match in week two, and now here they are getting O2'd by Vex. They did 2-0 need healing, but again, need healing. Strong lineup, but not as strong uh, as the rest of the teams that were in the Xbox side of things for EU. At number 11 is Vampire Lord. Again, they've been falling off recently. I know last week they had some substitute issues. Kenichi wasn't there uh, to play during the tournament. Uh, OG Comedy ended up ruining his uh, router by spilling G Fuel on it. I don't know if he was trying to speed up his uh, internet speeds there, but it didn't work apparently. And they also lost to Curse These Hands in the group play this week. So Vampire Lord falling off recently, taking a dip. Uh, in their play, I hope that they can pick it up. That's a that's a beautiful roster of some great players. I'd like to see uh, play more competitively down the road. So I hope that they can pick it up. But they're at number eleven this week. At number twelve this week is Zimmer Frame. They lost to OTP. However, they two owed Venom and Bulldog, and they have a very very big core veteran. Uh, lineup within three of their players with Sibs, Hamish, and It's Whitey. I feel like those three can lead that team to to bigger and better things. Uh, so Zimmer Frame is at number 12 this week. At number 13 is Brutal Fissure. Now they found their chemistry, apparently. Uh, you know, they had some trouble. They had to go up against Flashpoint early on in the tournament in both week one and week two of open bracket. They qualified by making the top eight, though. They're in group B which had uh, YCTG, Cryonatic, and Delirium Tremens. Delirium Tremens, good team. Wasn't so worried about them if I was any of the other th three teams. Uh, but YCTG and Cryonatic, both great rosters. Uh, so I'd be more worried about them. And they 2 owed everybody. They 2 owed YCTG. They 2 owed uh, Delirium Tremens. And they 2 owed Cryonatic. And, and they... They seem to found their chemistry with the new player that they added to their roster after IT left for Cyclone. So that's a big, big ups for Brutal Fissure. I feel like they're one of the stronger teams on PS4 again. At number 14 is the Happy Battle Cats. Now they 2 owed the Xbox team, or who is now known as Bushwakan Esports. So that was a big upset, and they played each other in game one. Whoever won that game, I would say, would be the second place team behind Onslaught. Uh, so they did. They upset Bush Wakan with the 2-0 set. And then they took one map from Onslaught, uh, and they made it into the Paladins Council League. So making it into the league is a big, big accomplishment for the Happy Battle Cats. But at the same time, they took one map off of our previous LAN champion. So that in itself is really big. That's a big downfall for Ons or a setback for Onslaught or a big step forward for the Happy Battle Cats. I hope that they can continue to grind and possibly even win some sets against these Xbox teams ranked above them. At number 15 this week is the Oni Channers. They lost 2-1 to one to the third leg, and they got the, the win over Paladin's Misfits, which was a newer roster. Um, and then they beat Thomas and Friends, uh, which in itself is a biggest comp big accomplishment there. Thomas and Friends is a really, really experienced lineup. But at the same time, you go against the third leg, bunch of veteran players there, uh, some players that you've played before and have smashed before or have beaten before or you know you haven't worried about them before, but you lost 2-1 to one to them this time. And the Oni Channers took a big loss the week before to warm up, so I feel that they are in the same position that Vampire Lord on Xbox NA is. Uh, they've just been falling off recently, have some chemistry problems. Maybe they, they need to uh, sit back, relax, and regroup as a roster, as a team, uh, and try to restart their chemistry and, and get themselves back up there into the competitive play and last but not least at number 16 is YCTG uh, I feel like they have fallen off more than Vampire Lord and Oni Channers together they went 0-2 
They they lost zero to two against Brutal Fissure, and they were the weakest in the weakest group of all of PS4 and Xbox. I feel like YCTG, uh, Cryonatic, Brutal Fissure, and Delirium Tremens were all the that made up the weakest group across EU, NA, PS4, and Xbox, um, and they got O2'd by Brutal Fissure, who they uh, you know have beaten. Flashpoint, who's beaten Brutal Fissure. So theoretically, you would think that they were able to beat Brutal Fissure. They brought back in their main roster. They're not using the two subs they were successful with uh, beforehand. So it'll be interesting to see how YCTG can adjust after such a big accomplishment of beating Flashpoint in the first week to getting 2 0 in the second week and now here losing to Brutal Fissure and barely making the league um, as they go 2-1 and one and only have two more points than Cryonatic. So it'll be interesting to see how YCTG can pick themselves up as well. Uh, but that is your that is your 16 teams going into the league, and that is your Week 0 power rankings going into Week 1 of the league play. Uh, so I'm excited for these teams to play each other. I'm excited to watch these matches on the Mixer stream, which is mixer.com slash paladins game. And, and I'm just I'm super excited for the very first season of the Paladins Console League. Um, so hope you guys are excited as me. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Uh, don't forget, every Monday is the Power Rankings. Uh, every Thursday is the live show on twitch.tv slash TV. That's R-E-A-L-B-L-U-T-V. Uh, don't forget as well, the podcast drop every Friday on YouTube. And don't forget to check out our Patreon if you want to support the stream and the show even more. That's patreon.com slash blueball, B-L-U-B-A-L-L. Thanks, guys. Continue to grind, and the Console Corner Show will continue to cover. Chandram, 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 Chandram,